Hello and welcome back. In the previous tutorial, we have seen that how do we create a basic link and once we click on that link, we know how to create a form and in that form, if we fill up something and click on save, then it's going to be saved to the database. So as a next step, what we are going to do is we are going to look into a functionality of Liferay, which is known as search container. So search container is something which allows the, uh, the values from the database to be pulled out and shown in a tabular format. Along with that, it provides some basic functionality of pagination where a user can go to a specific page. You can click, click and go to the next page, first page, last page. Those kind of functionalities are provided as a part of search container. In order to do that, uh, we have three step process. So the first step is like we need to create method to get all employees. So we will have to update the service uh, so that uh, that particular method is exposed. Then uh, we have um, to update the controller so that we can send the list of uh, all of those employees which we pulled out from the database to the front end which is JSP. Then in the JSP, we will have to update this, uh, update the JSP so that the search container can be uh, can be created over there and uh, it can be used to show the result. So uh, if we start with this first step, uh, let's come to employee service IMPL and in the employee service IMPL, I'll just create a method which is known as public. Um, it's going to be a type of list and in the list it would be employee then get employees then we will pass something to it so what i'm going to do is uh, we will take the first index and last index so start index and then the integer last index so we have this value now we will just put a return statement over here we'll create a object of list employee employees is equals to playlist now we'll just return this list so if we see this employee local service method we'll see like there is already a method which is implemented by life frame which is get employees okay so we'll do start and then we will do and so this is going to give me the list of all of the employees which are there between two uh, two indexes like a start index and an index and i'll just put this over here so that uh, this object will contain the list return from the database Another method that we uh, should expose is like how many uh, number of employees are there. So we'll just put it like count and over here there would be nothing and it would be an integer type. So I'll just delete and delete. Okay, let's just put a return statement over there. Control D, return. And if you come up over here, you will see there is already a method provided by Liferay, which you can just use like this. So now we have exposed two methods, which are employees count, which is gonna give me the list of employees, uh, the list, uh, the number of employees we have in the database. Another one is gonna be, which is gonna give me the list of employees. So I'll just go ahead and build the services now. So our service is built. Now this, uh, which is like the step number one is completed. Let's move on to step number two. So over here in my controller, um, since I want to send the data from over here to this page, what I'm gonna need is I'm gonna set up something as an attribute, request attribute. So to do that, I need to pull up the data from the database over here. So in order to access this service, which I just created, uh, no, the methods which I just added in the employee service IMPL, I need to 
fetch those so in the previous tutorial we have seen how we can reference a service and dxp so what i'm going to do is We'll just paste this stuff out over here and we will have this employee service object available to us. So now what we are going to do is we are just going to put this and let's see if those methods are available. No, they are not. So what we'll do is we'll do a build on those two projects so that the updated jar are produced. So I'll just do a build. Don't save. So the new jars has been updated. Let's see if those are available. Not yet. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do a Gradle refresh over here. Refresh, Gradle refresh. So this is going to make sure that uh, all of the references over here are updated and uh, we have the updated methods available over here. So I'm just going to do like this. Okay, well, good. We have our uh, both of the methods which we implemented get employees and employees count available to us. So over here we are going to do like this. So now what we can do is either we can pass some hard coded values over here to start with like 0 and 10. Or what we can do is we can pull up the complete count of the employees which is like uh, maybe like this get employees count. Okay. This is going to come in uh, this particular method get count is going to come in handy when uh, we are actually going to have a lot of data and uh, we want to utilize that data and uh, show into the pagination direct dynamically. So now this is uh, the end of step number two. So in this step what we have done is we have created uh, we have utilized the uh, the service and we have pulled out all of the entries of employees from 0 to 10 and we have updated that into the request via the set attribute and uh, whose object would be denoted in the JSP using entries. So now uh, this is our step number two. We have completed this. Now as a part of step number three, we need to we need to go into the JSP and update some code so that the search container can be developed over there. So I'll go back into my JSP and this is very basic code snippet that we need for life rate to work as in search container. Okay, so with this, um, with this small snippet of the code, our search, search container would be created. But there is a small thing that we need to kind of uh, put over here is uh, life rate UI search iterator. So uh, this particular tag specify that um, this all of the results needs to be iterated. Each row has to be iterated and the result has to be converted into something. So let's just uh, save it for now and try to see how exactly this behaves. So if we go back to this page, we will see like no entries were found. Something like this, which is strange because it should have iterated uh, the whole result. But um, let's do it in a different way. Uh, we, will, uh, we will have a deep understanding of how search container works. I have just created some piece of code. Let me just copy and paste it out over here and we will go into deep detail of this. So uh, with this tag, what we are doing is we are initializing a search container over here. Okay. So if you go in further detail, uh, we have a couple of entries over here that uh, we can configure. So uh, what we can do is we can specify that um, what is going to be my delta. The delta means like how many uh, number of elements would be there on a single page. Then we have empty result message like uh, what happens if there is no result uh, found in the entries. Then uh, this is like the size of the entries that uh, that we are going to show to the users. Now the next one is a uh, container result. So what exactly do we uh, put in the container result is the uh, list of the elements. So inside the results we are putting entries. Now further down the line we have a new tag which is known as um, UI search container row. So this one is specify one row uh, in the search container. Okay. 
so uh, what happens over here is like uh, we need to specify what exactly is the class uh, uh, of the type like this particular list is gonna be so for example in our case this is gonna be a list of employees so we are gonna put that class name then uh, we are gonna tell that what is going to be the uh, key property which is like primary key what is that in the in our case in our case that is employee ID so this is the service that XML that I just pulled up from the employee project okay now further down the line uh, if we go uh, then uh, what do we want to call one entry entity over there so uh, for example like when whenever you iterate a map you uh, or you iterate a list you get an object of that if you put up a enhanced for loop so that's how like this object is going to be called now further over here we have a search container uh, column text so for example like uh, we have many properties over here right but what we want is like in search container we just want to see only these two properties okay so what we can do is we can put those over here and whenever this iterator is gonna uh, get iterated it's gonna pull out uh, one variable which is like one element from the list and it's gonna iterate on that uh, it's gonna utilize that and uh, it's gonna pull out the corresponding property which is known as name from that object and it's going to list that out so uh, for now I'll just save it and let's see if uh, this thing works out uh, let's just wait for it to get deployed and then we'll, we will refresh the page so if we go back and uh, refresh the page um, we will see like uh, we have a uh, one entry in the database and that entry is uh, LR revisited and sample address is street 2 so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back into the uh, into the project and I'm gonna update something more so for example like this let's have one more property um, which is known as um, phone number then we will just put salary also over there Alright, and we'll just save it and let's see how this behaves. So let's just wait for it to get published. And if I'm gonna do a refresh over here, you see, like uh, we have uh, further elements added over here. Also, like uh, if you go in and uh, try to look into what all things life provides, so inside the column itself, what we can have is a lot of things. Okay, so as of now, we just utilize text, uh, but we can have a lot of property over here. We can have user, uh, which is going to be a user object. We can have a status. Um, then we can have a complete GSP, which can uh, be embedded over here. Then we can have an image, which can uh, get embedded over here. Similarly, we can have an icon, we can have a date. So these are the type of attributes that are supported by the column. Okay. So that's how uh, you can implement a very basic uh, a search container. There are a lot of things which are uh, kind of available with search container. Uh, we can we, we will look into those once we go deep dive uh, into the search container. So uh, uh, for now, uh, that's it. Uh, thanks a lot for tuning in. Bye bye.